So today we're going to talk about different types of triangles. And uh, you should be following along and filling this information in on the notes worksheets that I gave you. Uh, the first thing is there are basically uh, a couple different ways to classify triangles. The first is by side length. So um, basically these names will all be based on the sides of the triangles. So for instance, scalene means that there are no congruent sides. So all three of these sides have different lengths. Isosceles means at least two congruent sides. So looking at this diagram, we'll say that these two are the same and that one is different, or maybe not. Um, when we talk about at least two congruent sides, even if all three sides are congruent to each other, it's technically considered an isosceles triangle as well. And equilateral is all sides congruent. So the question I have for you, is an isosceles triangle equilateral? And the answer is no. Is an equilateral triangle isosceles? And the answer is yes. Okay, so there's a pretty good always, sometimes, never for you to consider. Now another way that we can classify triangles is by their angle measure. So an acute triangle is one where all angles are acute. So each of the three angles is less than 90 degrees. A right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle. Can a triangle have more than one right angle? Hopefully you've come to the conclusion that the answer is no, because if you have two right angles, then you already have 180 degrees, and there's no way for you to make a triangle with two right angles. They just won't touch. And then obtuse has one obtuse angle. And again, if it has more than two obtuse angles, like there's one obtuse angle and there's another, you will never, ever, ever be able to make a triangle out of that. Okay? So those are your classifications. You have three based on the side lengths, scalene, isosceles, equilateral, and you have three based on angle measures, namely acute, right, and obtuse. Now, talking about isosceles triangles, uh, if I say that these two are the congruent sides, and we name this triangle A, B, C, the two congruent sides are called legs. So there's a leg and there's a leg. So segment AB and segment AC are the legs of this isosceles triangle. The non-congruent side we call the base. And actually I'm going to move this down a little bit. So segment BC is the base. Now these two angles that are at the base of the isosceles triangle, so angle B and angle C, are called base angles. And then angle A is the vertex angle. And the vertex angle is the one that's included by the legs.
So if we come over to this other triangle and we assume that these two legs are the congruent ones, then this side is the base, this is a leg, this is a leg, this angle right here is the vertex angle, and then these two angles here and here are the, the base angles. Okay, so regardless of whether it's the bottom of the triangle, however you rotate it, the base is always the non-congruent side. All right, even in a situation like the second one here where it's not sitting on the base. All right, so don't, don't assume that base means bottom. Base just means the side that is not congruent. Finally, right triangles. So if this is a right triangle, and this is a right triangle. We, um, we call the two sides that include the right angle, we call them legs. And then we call the opposite side the hypotenuse. So the legs are the sides that include the right angle and the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So even in this picture over here, we would have a leg, a leg, and then the hypotenuse. So that's it for the terminology. Uh, the rest of these problems on, on the worksheet, you can kind of go through and do on your own, and I will post the solutions as part of the day's notes.